Here's a question from Zetaphor, who says, I'm new to FPV, and there's something I'm wondering about as someone who's been active in the VR space since 2015. Why isn't there any push or interest for binocular drones so you can have depth perception? Um, that has existed in the past. That existed in the past. Um... So this is a case where kids these days don't know what came before them. Don't say that with any rancor. But yeah, here is an article from June 2016 about the Blackbird 2 camera, 3D camera. Um, so there's a lot of challenges with the 3D systems that meant that people didn't really use them. So... One of the challenges is that in order to get good 3D performance, oh, hang on a second, there we go. In order to get good 3D performance, you need separation of the cameras. And on a small drone, it can be difficult to get enough separation to have good good uh, 3D performance, right? That's obviously solvable because if you think about how far apart human eyes are, that's good enough for what we do. Um, but that's one of the challenges. Um, the other challenge is that transmitting the 3D image to the goggles, uh, there, there were various ways of doing it. One way is what you see here, which puts the left image on the left side and the right image on the right side. And then the goggles have to split them down the middle and send one to the left eye and one to the right eye. The goggles, old fat shark goggles supported this. There was another method that did, uh, interlaced frames. So one frame was the left eye, one frame was the right eye. Each eye gets 15 or gets 30 frames per second, but they're not interlaced back together like they normally would be. But again, the goggles have to know to do that. The goggles have to know to send one frame to the left and one frame to the right. Um, the other way of doing it is what SkyZone did, where SkyZone had two video transmitters. So SkyZone had a dual video transmitter. Uh... See if I can find it. Yeah, here's the old SkyZone system. Um, this is the old SkyZone system. It had a dual band video transmitter transmitted on two channels. The advantage of this was that you got two full NTSC or PAL, whatever it was, two full feeds. But the disadvantage was it used twice as much spectrum. So it used two FPV channels instead of one. One of these would receive on one channel, one would receive on the other. This is not diversity. It's one on one channel, one on the other, and you get the 3D feed back to the goggles. Um, the, the long and short of it is this never took off. It never got super popular. Um, the complexity of setting up the dual cameras, of having maybe a dual video, you either have, like SkyZone did, a dual video transmitter, or you have half resolution on a single channel, which the resolution is already not great. Um, all in all, I think that people just didn't feel it was worth the hassle for the, the trade, the, the payoff. And it just never got popular. People have done it though. It's not, it's not a new idea and it has been done and everybody just uses 2D and that's it. That's, that's good enough. Um... I've heard that uh, it's it's uh, really useful for like proximity style flying. The other thing is that for for like long range or cruising, where you're kind of far away from the obstacles, there's no real 3D effect anyway, because everything is so far away from you, it all flattens out. But for proximity flying, I've heard that it's kind of cool. Um, anyway, uh, that's uh, today. I think those things pretty much just aren't done anymore. They're not, those products really aren't made and goggles don't really support it.